Okay. Anyone else? We have quite a few back there. I mean, you're welcome to, to speak. Madam you know, Chairman, I'd like to, you know, if we got JPs here, I'd be interested in asking them about the filing process to see if they did ask or were asked about uh, being a member of the county committee or the district committee. Okay. And that's fine, but I'd also like to point out that there's nothing in the rules that puts that burden on the chairman, but we can certainly let them speak to that. Does anyone have any more questions for Mr. Newcomb? I, I'm, and I, I'm, I don't want to, I'm not holding you responsible. I just make sure that we, by the end of the night, we have a better understanding of the, the complaint. If there's a complaint about the process on February 2023, I just want to make sure I identify what county official complains that they were not taken care of on Fe February 2023. Because that's what I'm concerned about. Yeah. If it go all the way back, you know, to March 1st, 2022, I get there's more. There, there were no elected officials at the committee meeting that night in February that complained. Okay. Uh, I had to take issue with that. There was the county judge, the sheriff, Justin Rue, and Jim Whitton. Actually, uh, and they were told that they definitely could not serve on the district committee. I don't remember anybody, any of them being told that they definitely could not serve. It, luckily, and that's fine. luckily, that was resolved, and we decided that if they wanted to run, they could. They wouldn't be automatic. So there was some misunderstanding. It, uh, Mr. Webb got up and, and basically said that the seats were being taken away from them. So that's when they kind of bristled and they thought, wait, what? Why are these seats being taken away? And then it was later explained, as Mr. Luck said, I, I read the rule, I pulled out my rule book, and I read it, and it was just explained that because they didn't submit their intent in writing, then they would just need to run with everyone else in the election. What they would have to run, these seats were not being automatically given to them, and that is when things seemed to calm down, and then people started checking their calendars, and we were able to move forward. Um, does that answer your question? So it, I'm, I'm just trying to get to this place. So if there was a dispute that was resolved at the meeting in February, then we're not talking about a problem at the meeting in February. Am I right about that? Right. That's right. <clears throat> I'm just trying to make sure I understand because I don't think I have a good understanding. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to vex anyone. You know, you know that meeting is a good three and a half hours. I can understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there, there, there was a, at, at the end of three hours, we left all here in agreement, you know, on who was going to go, and, and, and there was no no further discussion. Is there, and so is part of the issue that you believe, is part of your understanding that the issue is that even though it was, it, it focused on attendance at the next convention, which would be the election meeting. It also, my understanding is, I could be wrong, my understanding is for those county-wide elected officials, the county sheriff, the county judge, others, their term of office is now four years. Since they failed to get elected, they're shut out for four years, at least as far as they can tell or they'll have to vote them in in the next cycle which starts again you'll see it starts in november of this year so i just want to make sure we fix and understand what we're talking about because if there was a problem in that february meeting we got to fix and fix it and if there wasn't a problem i don't know that we should be talking about it we, we, when we left there wasn't a problem okay okay thank you madam chairman let me make a comment on that because you make a good point. One of the problems we've got is the rules that date back to the signing of yes or no by the county officials date back to a time where we had only two-year terms. When we went to four-year terms with county judge, sheriff, all the countywide officials, the state party did not update the rules to reflect what is going to be involved for those nine individuals here in Saline County and any other counties, I guess, because I guess there's nine officials in any county where uh, we have all Republicans elected. They're elected to a four-year term, so they will not be filing again or they would fill out any paperwork to designate whether they want to be on the district committee from 2024 and through 2025. So that is a problem we're going to have to address. I would like to add to that concerning the four-year elected officials. They will have the opportunity next year at county convention to run for a position on the district committee. So it's not like they're shut out for a four-year term. But they're, based on our rules, they're automatically going to say yes. But 
but according to our rules, we need to be looking at how the rule is written, not how we want it to be or think it should be written, but also the party of individual responsibility. So we should be expecting people to familiarize themselves with the rules under which they are saying they will be beholden and they're going to be representing people. So I, I think we need to just stick to whether or not the county committee broke the rule as it is written, not as we think it should be written. Any more questions for Mr. Newcomb? Thank you, sir. I, I, I apologize for vexing you, but I'm sure the first section makes right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Newton. You did a great job. Okay. Um, uh, uh, you have not signed up. I'll put your name down. Uh, Ms. Garner, I did tell Ms. Garner she could be next. And then uh, CJ, right? I'll put you down, and then you can go after Ms. Garner. Whew. 